Joining me today on World View with Dennis Campbell is Dennis Campbell, Editor-in-Chief of UK Progressive Magazine. The book is Egypt Unshackled. That's also the topic today. Dennis, let's start with Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi's uh, extrajudicial declaration that he made, which made some headlines, and then we'll delve deeper into what's happening in Egypt. Uh, what, what was that declaration exactly? Well, basically, the, the declaration is one in which he said that uh, no other governing body, most uh, especially the judiciary itself, which, if you remember, going back a few months, other people that dissolved parliament and attempted to say, basically, you have to start all over again, despite all the progress that had been made. They'd had parliamentary elections, they had seated a parliament, they'd had a presidential election, and basically the only thing that, that the uh, judiciary was saying could stand was the presidential election and, and he basically is saying I want to make certain that nothing that I do can be stopped by this judicial body in any form. I'm taking power and what a lot of people have assumed that to mean is that he's become the next Hosni Mubarak. He has become uh, the, the dictator of the new Egyptian government and I don't think that's exactly true. Okay, so let's let's go th down that uh, route. Thomas Friedman had an interesting article earlier in the week where he said the question now is, will President Morsi be a diplomat or will he be a dictator? Certainly, he's framing it, particularly in giving himself credit for the ceasefire in Israel between Israel and Hamas as being a more diplomatic character, although that is not a statement that's without controversy. So what are going to be the key things to look at in the next I don't know, month, six months, year, to determine what direction is this going to go? Well, you're going to be looking at a number of different factors. I mean, the, from what I understand, what's happening right now as we are filming this and will be going on this evening is that they are rushing a draft of the Constitution through the parliamentary body and through this constitutional body to then make certain that it goes out for ratification. However, some of the commentary I've seen says that because the document is a little bit more strident than people had expected, a little bit more authoritarian, that this first pass is likely to fail so that it comes, he, he, he gets to come back to the table looking very, very diplomatic after it fails at, in election, the Constitution, and then is in a position to come up with a new Constitution, essentially. So he's in a bit of an interesting spot because... Egypt, on the one hand, is the second biggest uh, 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 benefactor of American aid money behind Israel. And at the same time, uh, Morsi has taken, at least when it came a couple of weeks ago, between Israel and Hamas, a very anti-Israeli position. So he has to know that there's a, there's a, there's not, maybe it's not a fine line, maybe it's a bit of a blurry line, but there is a line as far as how far he can go before that aid starts to, to become a question mark, doesn't it? Exactly. And, you know, I think when I, you know, I've read today that uh, uh, our good friend in Texas, uh, the, the man not playing with a completely full deck, Louis Gomert, came out and, and, and said, I don't know whether it was on the floor, I think it was on a radio station that, uh, you know, President Obama has been uh, teaming up with the Muslim Brotherhood. And, and you know, it, it's just strange to see the reaction the minute you have the Muslim Brotherhood come up as a, as a potential party to these talks. What a lot of people don't understand is that the Muslim Brotherhood is probably the, the, the most moderate of all the potential options that were out there. <laughs> and the fact is, is that Morsi's a pretty smart guy. He's going to allow this process to go through and he's going to do what he can to keep you know, Hamas happy because obviously they are a part of, of Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, on the very extreme sides of it in the, in the West Bank and, and Gaza, but he's not going to do anything to upset the apple cart in what's been essentially a 35-year peace in the region. Do you think that he's going to be put in a position to directly have to address these reports that we're getting, satellite reports, that uh, there is a refueling, so to speak, of Hamas taking place from Iran and that the path for that is going via the Red Sea, Sudan, and ultimately Egypt, which also shares a border with Gaza. Is that going to become a factor for Morsi's credibility at some point? Is he trying to simply make that just not even come up? What's his position? I, don't, I really think he's got enough problems. He's got 80 million people inside the most populous 
you know, Muslim nation in the, well, actually, they're, they're really more secular, but there is a very large percentage of Muslim and Islamic uh, people inside of Egypt itself. I think he's got enough just to keep himself in power and moving forward from there. The one party that we've not talked about in all this is the SCAF, the S Supreme Council of the, Al of the Armed Forces. And that is the, the ultimate decider. At the end of the day, if they're unhappy with what happens, they control the guns, they control the army, and if they decide that, you know, this is unacceptable, more she's gone. So he's got to keep a lot of balls in the air and a lot of people happy and show that he's, you know, the moderate leader that everybody expects him to be. Yes, the new constitution has a lot of, uh, of uh, what sends the right off into a tizzy, uh, his foundation in Sharia law, but it is not as extreme as what you see in Iran or other parts of the, of the uh, other world. So I don't see uh, you know, a, a huge change, but I do think that there are going to be fits and starts. It took the United States 11 years from the uh, Declaration of Independence to actually have a constitution. It's going to take a considerable amount of time before this gets itself settled, and it's only been 20 months. All right, so De Dennis Campbell, Worldview with Dennis Campbell, the last day of November, you'll see Dennis <laughs> clean-shaven next week. And uh, what will be our topic of discussion for next week, Dennis? You know, we've, we've got some breaking news here in the United Kingdom with the release of the Levinson Press Report. Um, that is causing huge uh, uh, tremors over here. We've got, to, obviously, the, the committee has come out and, and, and damned, rightfully so, uh, both Rupert and James Murdoch for their oversight of News International. And uh, they're talking about putting in a regulatory body that will oversee the press. Now, this is a state body. Uh, Cameron is said it's dead on arrival in terms of the, the, the regulatory body. But there's lots of implications here. And there's lots of implications there. Because if Murdoch is found by Parliament to have not run News International very well, and if we see some phone hacking convictions come out as a result of what has happened, you're going to find yourself with the, the headless SEC now uh, having to dive into this. Because once one of these phone hacking cases results in a conviction, you're going to be in a position where you're going to be putting under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act the licenses of Fox News and all of the holdings in the United States right. at risk. So this going to be big. All right, that, that'll be for next week. We've been speaking, of course, with Dennis Campbell. He's editor-in-chief of UK Progressive Magazine. Check out the book Egypt Unshackled and the latest book, Billionaire Boys Election Freak Show. Dennis, we'll talk to you next week. We'll see you then.